Hey folks, welcome back to the Guitar Wishlist. My name is Three Chord Dave and today we're talking about the Dwight Coronet. And no, it's not a knockoff or a counterfeit or anything like that. Now before we get started, every episode of Guitar Wishlist is heavily influenced by this book here, The 1001 Guitars That You Should Dream Of Playing Before You Die. This is one of the coolest books I've ever bought. It has guitar history from literally hundreds of years ago. You should check it out. Some very, very cool stuff in here. I've spent hours and hours going through this book. You will love it. It is cool. Check out your links in the description below and you can check out your very own copy. Now, what is the Dwight Coronet? How did it come to be and what's going on? Specs wise, it's exactly like the Epiphone Coronet. It's a mahogany body, mahogany neck, a rosewood fretboard, a P90, and not a whole lot else. That's all you need. Pretty cool, right? So in the 60s, Gibson did a few experimental things. Like a lot of people in the 60s, they tried things out to see how it worked for them. Some things worked, some things did not. And the Dwight Coronet was a Gibson produced guitar. Yes, it was made in the Kalamazoo factory, like many guitars of the day, Epiphone and Gibsons and Dwight's. Coronets under the Dwight brand name were only produced between 1961 and 1962. Only about 80 of these guitars ever left the factory, although there is no official count, so we don't know how many actually left and how many got out there, or how many are left, but we'll get into that in a few moments. Between 1963 and 1967, the Epiphone Dwight Coronet was in production. And instead of the single color choice, which was cherry on the Dwight Coronets, you now had two color choices, cherry and silver fox. Silver Fox, of course, is a very cool colour that Epiphone had for the coronets. But we're looking here at the 1961 to 1962 version, the Dwight coronet. And why did this guitar exist? Why did it say Dwight and not Gibson or Epiphone or anything else? Well, Dwight was an in-house brand for Sonny Shields Music in East St. Louis in Illinois. Uh, basically a brand deal that Gibson did to produce guitars for this music store slash music lessons company. Now, the only difference between the Epiphone coronet of the day and the Dwight coronet of the day was the branding on the headstock. And of course, the emblem was a D instead of an E for the Epiphone. So exactly the same guitar made by exactly the same people in exactly the same factory. So that's why this guitar makes it onto Guitar Wishlist because it's a very interesting piece of history for the Gibson Guitar Company and slots nicely into the Epiphone factory as well. Of course, in 1963, they also added the different headstock. They put a Batwing headstock on it and the Dwight part went on the truss rod cover instead of the open book Kalamazoo style headstock, which was on the 61 to 62 version and, you know, is much more classic of a Gibson look. Now, as I said, nobody really knows how many of the 61 to 62 versions were ever uh, released from the factory because in 1970, sadly, Sonny's had uh, a fire and that actually put the store out of business and there was no record from the store or from Epiphone slash Gibson of the day as to how many had ever been produced. Rough estimates suggest that there was about 80 of them that left the factory in this first year of production. Now I did go looking for these guitars today on Reverb and eBay and a few other sites, and I just kept coming up with the Epiphone Dwight Coronet, which costs about $4,000 if you wanna pick one of those up, which is still an interesting piece of Gibson history, but is not the piece of history that I'm looking for. So that's not the one we're looking for. I think if you could get one, you're talking minimum $6,000, but bear in mind, there's only about 80 of these at most out there in the world. And it's a very interesting slice of Gibson history. Like why were they doing in-store brands? It's like if they started making Harley Benton guitars for Thoman. Imagine how cool that would be. Never gonna happen. <laughs> in terms of famous players this, of these guitars, uh, Steve Marriott from Humble Pie actually played a Dwight Coronet for a little bit. Although it's unlikely he was a student that's at Sonny Shields Music. You never know. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think of the Dwight Coronet. Did you know about these guitars and Gibson's history? Or is it something you're just learning about today? Let me know if you would like to play Coronet, because of course, Epiphone have a reissue of the Coronet out now, which you can pick up for, I think, about 300 euros, which is not a bad deal at all. Anyway, guys, 
That's Guitar Wishlist for this week. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back with Guitars of the Week on Friday and lots of guitar news this week, so check out videos coming very, very soon. And I'll be back for Three Chord Dave live on Saturday. And until then, take care.